Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. We are in a kind of an unusual location. I am in my husband Riley's truck. He's about to get in. So we are going to a little dinner party game night with some friends and it's about an hour away. It's, it's with a group of Riley's college friends. And I thought it started at six, so we're gonna leave at five. So I was planning on filming this video from four to five, but it actually starts at five. So it's now four and we need to leave. So I did not have time to film this. And this is supposed to go live tomorrow morning. So this is my last chance. Um, so I thought I would just do it while we drive. Riley is not yet out in the car, obviously, um, but he will join me. And so I'm going to try to pick some of the questions that might ask about him as well. Come on in, I was just introducing the video. I'm gonna try to do as few cuts as possible. Say hello. Hi, because you're gonna go home and upload it. <laughs> because I'm gonna come home probably at like 11 o'clock and um, edit and upload it. So I'm going to try not to uh, have to cut too much, but I'm gonna pull up the questions on my phone. I'll find some good ones and we'll kind of work our way through them. Um, I'll try to do about a 30 minute Q and A or so. We won't do the whole um, hour drive. I say that now, but let me pull up the questions that folks asked on Instagram and see what we can find. Okay, I'm just gonna prop my camera up and maybe hold it a little bit. <laughs> Hopefully it will stay up. Um, Riley, you have anything to say? No. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so the first question, and I got this in quite a few different forms, was what was the hardest part of transitioning from one child to two children? And there are so many things that were hard. For us, the transition from one to two was significantly harder than the transition from zero to one. Um, I think one thing that was really hard for me was that when we just had Nora, when I, like we both tag teamed taking care of her. And so if I was nursing her or anything like that, like we could, Riley and I could sit and talk. I found going from one to two lonely in the sense that whenever I was taking care of baby Colin, Riley was taking care of toddler Nora elsewhere. Um, and so we weren't in the same, we weren't like together as much, you know? What would you say is the hardest part? Boy you have like a whole new sleep and eating schedule, like a whole different schedule. Like they're not going down at the same time most of the time. So one's awake and one's asleep all the time. Instead of when you have one, she might sleep for two hours and you get this great big break. True. To get things done and that's gone. <laughs> True. It's pretty constant. It's pretty constant. That first year of having Colin um, was was hard. It was just simply hard. It was really good. It was really cute and fun, but it was hard. I, there's no two ways about it. I think having as much support as you possibly can is the best thing that you can do for you and your family, whether that's paid support, which was what we had, or family support, if you have that, um, friends, just anything, because you're gonna need some breaks and you're gonna need some time to spend one-on-one -on -one time, specifically with your older child. I think moms generally tend to be the ones to be with the baby, and you're gonna miss your older child and getting that one-on-one -on -one time with them too. I remember, that's what I cried the most about when I was postpartum with Colin was just missing my nor nor time, like one on one. So it's not easy, but after that first year, it's so fun now. Like they're, the two of them are like thick as thieves ganging up on us all the time and they're really cute and they have a lot of fun together. And um, I love that they're so close in age, but they gave us a run for our money there for that first year, year and a half. Can you tell that story about when Nora got Colin to tell you to go home? No, tell them that. I don't remember. I was Okay, so the other day, Nora asked for a treat and it was like dinner time. And so I said, no, Nora, you can't have a treat. We're about to eat dinner. And she went and got Colin, unbeknownst to me, and told Colin what had happened. And Colin came over to me with his little pudgy finger and he pointed at me and said, mommy, call daddy. <laughs> and so I thought it was funny. So I was like, okay, I'll call daddy. And he called daddy and he, I called dad. I called Riley and um, when I called Riley and Colin was started like telling Riley, he was like, no, no, what tree mom said no. And he's like going through the whole thing. They're really cute together now. I mean, they fight all the time, but they also love each other and it's really fun. 
Okay, on a totally different topic, someone asked, did you work with a designer for your new house or was it all you? I love all that you've done. Thank you so much. Um, no, we're not working with a designer. I'm just going with my gut instinct and hoping it works. Um, so far, it's so good. Several, when is your next Disney trips? Our next Disney trip is in the spring, coming up here in the next couple of months. And we're going to Disneyland in California. Someone said, what made you decide on Disneyland? Um, we've been wanting to go to Disneyland for a while. We were just waiting for our kids to be slightly older so that the flight would be a little bit more bearable. I'm not sure that it will be. That'll be the worst part. <laughs> sure and will. The transportation yeah. sucks. Yeah, it's not as easy. Um, our son Colin is two and a half and he is one of those high energy kids who just does really well. We joke that he's like an outdoor dog, that his spirit animal is like an outdoor dog and that our daughter's spirit animal is like an indoor cat. She loves to be cozy, curled up in blankets, snuggling, reading books, playing with her dollhouse and Colin just likes to be running free and wild. And so him being like sequestered on an airplane for you know three or four hours is just really hard. But now that they're older, we really wanted to go try it, and that's that. How are you still liking lash extensions? I love lash extensions. I just got them filled in yesterday. I've been getting them, getting ones that are brown, they're dark brown for a little bit of a softer look. I really like them. Um, my BFF is going to have two under two this fall. What are some ways I can be helpful? Super sweet question. Um, I think anything that you can do to support, just be present and help, like do dishes, do laundry, take the older child out for a walk, hold the baby while the mom takes a shower, um, just being physically present is really, really helpful because it's just two extra hands to help with everything. Someone said, do you still use Plan to Eat? I do, in fact, just this morning, I used Plan to Eat to plan our meals for the week, and then off of my Plan to Eat list, I placed a grocery delivery order, so we just had our groceries delivered right before we left. Do you and Riley have life insurance and a will? Yes, we have life insurance. We're working on our will as we speak. Tips for going out of your comfort zone as an introvert who is trying to branch out more. I think my biggest tip for this is that no one is thinking about you as much as you are thinking about you. And so when you kind of put yourself out there, go to something new and you might feel a little bit awkward or a little bit uncomfortable or you're not quite sure what to wear or what to say, you are obsessing about it way more than anyone else in the room is. And um, no one is going home and being like, wow, that was a weird, and like no one's thinking that. Everyone's just concerned about themselves. So I think there's a lot of peace that comes with that of knowing that like, you can just kind of go be you and everyone's just trying their best not to feel awkward, you know? So you can do it. Do you still use your assistant or just a babysitter? We only have a babysitter in our life right now. Um, so our babysitter comes typically two to three, sometimes four days a week, depending on if it's the busy season or not. And um, she'll watch the kids for a couple of hours. And typically I go to the gym and then I bring a change of clothes and go right over to my office to package orders and get work done. And um, then I come home and shower and then she's off. That's normally how it goes. Family vacation plans this year. Broken bow, couples trip with just you and Riley. Um, okay, so we have Disneyland coming up here in the spring. Prior to that, we, I think, are flying either to... <laughs> My parents just bought a beach condo in the sunny state of Florida. And so I think we might be going to see their new condo um, in Florida. They're not moving there full time yet. It's their vacation home for the next couple of years until they both retire, in which case they will move there permanently. Um, so, but they're not, they have not decided yet if they are going over the Easter weekend to that condo. So if they are, we will probably fly and meet them there. If not, we will most likely just fly back to Maryland to um, see family in Maryland. 
and then we have, so that's first, then there will be Disneyland. We are not doing a family beach vacation like Outer Banks or anything this year. It was just really hard to plan. Allie just had her third baby. My parents were buying this place and they weren't sure when they were gonna close on it. And it was kind of like everything was up in the air. So we just, I think what we'll end up doing is going as a group to this family, you know, this new, vacation condo but that the date hasn't been planned out yet I would love to go to Broken Bow this fall um, I've joked before that making plans with Riley's side of the family is a little like nailing jello to a wall they are just not super into planning ahead would you say so well I don't I don't really know what the, the key is because last year I really tried to push for a Broken Bow trip and it was just really hard to get people to agree on dates so we'll see, I'm gonna try again. You know, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And we always have such a good time, it's just hard. Um, it's hard. The commitment side of things can be a little bit hard sometimes. What is your favorite room in your new house? Um, my favorite part of our new house is just our outdoor space. I absolutely love having our back patio that overlooks the pool. I love our front driveway area. I love, we just spend, I mean, quite literally probably 10 times more time outside now than we did in our previous home and I absolutely love that but my favorite room would have to be our bedroom it's probably the only room in the house that's like 100% done and it is just so cozy all of our like our mattress is comfy our sheets are comfy I love the color on the walls which is pale oak by I think Sherwin Williams or Benjamin Moore but it's called pale oak and it's just like this really soothing warm tan and we have like big blackout curtains and it's just it that's my favorite room do you have a different favorite room no that's that's my favorite it is the kitchen will be mine yeah favorite. i think the kitchen will be mine too currently our kitchen looks like a, an OBGYN office from the 90s like no kidding but a lot of delicious food has come out of it can you see in the back seat i mean Tres Leches cake today for this party because we're doing a Mexican food theme. I also made chocolate chip cookies today. All kinds of things. Okay, what are your go-to easy meals? So when we are having busy weeks, which is lately been pretty standard, typically one night I make tacos. Um, our kids love tacos and they're so easy. Um, ground beef tacos. One night I make some kind of pasta so um, usually like tortellini, like four cheese tortellini in like the, in a marinara sauce. And I'll serve it with like a salad and some garlic bread. Um, fajitas is another really easy one that we do a lot. I'm trying to think what else. Chili, I love to make chili and that makes a lot. So then it will have leftovers for lunch for like three or four days after, which is really nice. Um, we do Weight Watchers pizza a lot, which is just self-rising flour, equal parts self-rising flour and, um, plain non-fat Greek yogurt and then just put pizza sauce and cheese on top and you just it's so delicious we do that a lot uh, I've been making sourdough all the time so a lot of times we'll just make like grilled cheese um, sandwiches on sourdough bread maybe grilled ham and cheese and then just have, like a can of soup can you think of anything else steak and potatoes yeah we do we just like we'll do grilled steak with like baked potatoes and like a can of green beans or if we have happen to have you know fresh green beans or i'll just steam some frozen broccoli we do that actually a lot usually once a week um so those are some of our easiest easy meals that like don't take a recipe don't take any prep i just can make them and it's like a 30 minute prep time love doing that can you share about can you share about your experience tapering off anxiety medication? So I tapered off only, Riley's laughing, I'm still on it. I tapered off only when I was pregnant with Colin. So I had really, really bad postpartum anxiety and depression after I had Nora, really like the, the darkest days of my life. And I went on medication and then as soon as I found out that I was pregnant with Colin, I tapered off of it for the pregnancy. You do not have to, there are some um, types of antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications that you can stay on that are safe while pregnant. And you should definitely talk to your doctor about that if you want to, because some people really truly need to stay on something while they're pregnant, especially with all the hormonal fluctuations and whatnot. I decided to go off of it. 
Um, unclear if that was the best decision because my pregnancy with Colin, I was deeply depressed. But anyway, after I had him within the first two weeks, I tapered back onto it and I've been on ever since. And I'm on a very, I'm only on like 10 milligrams. I'm on a super low dose, but I don't see um, a time anywhere in the near future that I'll be going off because I feel so much better. Um, and I feel so much more peaceful and the like reeling thoughts and intrusive thoughts that just have been with me my whole adult life no longer exist. And so I don't, I, I really, it's helped me so deeply. And I've also done, you know, the hard work of therapy. I did EMDR, like I've done those things too, but just day to day, it's really a super helpful tool for me. Um, what do you think about it? Riley studied psychology, so he likes to talk about it. Oh yeah, it changed my life. When I went on it. <laughs> <laughs> did it really? Are you kidding? No, I did go ahead it's stressed i was very stressed because you were stressed and um and i couldn't fix it and so whenever you um went on meds and you um you, you like were a lot happier i was worrying about you so much because you were so depressed i was worried about you being so depressed yeah and i couldn't there was nothing i could do about it and you did therapy and everything and um you know i just felt like uh lost about it oh yeah I just would try to take Nora and, and take care of Nora, but I couldn't help you. Yeah, it's hard. It's really hard. Um, anyone who's going through that is hard. The same person asked, um, did you stay on it while you were pregnant? So I just said that I did not, um, but I can off the top of my head name several friends and family members who opted to stay on their anxiety medication while pregnant. Some went on a lower dose, some did not. Um, there are risks with everything. There, you know, obviously are risks with taking something like that while you're pregnant, but there's also a risk of being deeply depressed and, and like on the maternal side of things. Uh, mom having to function for nine or 10 months in a deep depression is not good either. So you definitely talk to your doctor about that and like figure out what the right plan is for you in your life. Um, what does Charlie Bear do all day? I have a dog as well. I'm curious about his personality. He's a little grumpy old man. He's 10 years old and he just barks at the delivery people and lays on the top of the couch and looks out the door pretty much, right? Yeah, he, he just like takes off through the neighborhood now. It's like his new thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did I tell y'all the other day I was in our house where it like us, oh, where it's about to go. Um, I was in our house and I look out front and there's this older man walking Charlie, my dog, Charlie, who I don't know the man. And I was like, surely that's not Charlie, but that's weird. He is like a major twin. So I start calling his name and my Charlie is not in my house. So I go out front and this sweet Southern old man's like, I figured someone would come out if they saw me walking their dog. Well, our dog Charlie has just been really making himself known in our neighborhood. Then th these were, these incidents were probably four months apart. Then pretty more recently, um, Charlie got out and ran down the hill to our neighbor's house and they have a doggy door and he ran in their doggy door, like zero manners. And um, we know that the people that live there and the lady came out and she was like, oh my stars, I thought it was a raccoon. <laughs> it was Charlie, cause he's gray. Um, and we had like a good laugh about it. But now we've been like, so we have like a line on the yard um, and we've been like super careful about it because he's just been taking the liberties of doing whatever he wants. Um, okay, tips for feeling isolated in motherhood. Ugh, it's the worst. It's so hard. Um, even now, with as much of a community as I have and as many mom friends as I have, there are still some days when I'm at home with the kids all day that it's just, it's hard sometimes. It's just simply hard. And those are the days, like with the decluttering, when I pop my headphones in and I call my sister and we just talk for a little while. So if you have a friend across the country or across town or anywhere where you can just like talk to them for an hour or so while you're just like doing dish dishes and folding laundry and stuff, that just sometimes knowing that someone else is in the same spot, even if you're not physically in the same place, can be really helpful. What's your day-to-day -day routine with your children? Well, here's how it goes. I'm gonna be real honest. Um, my fantasy mom self gets up well before my kids and has like coffee and does like a devotional and all this like lovely stuff. In real life, my kids 
come barreling into our room and wake us up um, by asking for yogurt and milk. They like eat dairy like you've never seen. Um, and so we get them cups of yogurt and, and cups of milk. And then they usually want to watch Bluey, and so we turn on Bluey, and then while they're watching Bluey, I usually get myself together to some degree, make a cup of coffee, make some breakfast, like that kind of thing. Um, and then on babysitter days, my babysitter comes and I go to the gym and then go to work. On non-babysitter days, I hang out with them. Usually I send out a text to the moms, or someone else will have, to the moms in my neighborhood and see what everyone else is up to. And then we, we get together almost every single day at some point. So we'll meet up at the playground or at the park, or we'll meet up at someone else's house and ride bikes in the driveway or whatever, just to, you know, be alongside another adult. We get to chat and the kids have more fun and it ends up working out well. Um, then we do lunchtime. Colin is going down for a nap after lunch, probably about 50% of the time these days. So I'll try to get him down for a nap and then Nora will do like a low key activity like coloring or something like that while he naps. Um, and then we usually go play, if it's nice enough, we'll usually go play outside from like three to five or six, pretty much actually. Like we'll spend a few hours outside playing. And then Riley will get home around maybe six on the early side and maybe like seven on the later side. And then we do dinner and then bath time and then bedtime. That's pretty much it. It changes depending on the day, but that's that's basically it. Someone asked me what my favorite high school musical song is. I can't think of the name of it. Let me look on Spotify so I can come up with the name of it. I loved, loved high school musical when it came out. Um Okay, in the first High School Musical, I loved Start of Something New. I thought it was so beautiful. Um, I also loved, you from the second one, You Are the Music in Me. Loved that one. Also, Vanessa Hudgens' Gotta Go My Own Way. Like, so good. And then the last one, I think the, my last, on the third one, my favorite one was Just Wanna Be With You. Riley, what's your favorite song from High School Musical? Yeah, I was in college when that came out. <laughs> yep, I was in... When did I, it come out? I was in high school, but I still just loved it. And Zac Efron was, like, my number one celebrity crush for a long, 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 long time. I mean, I still think he's really cute, but not, like, he wouldn't be my top crush now, but back then he really was. Best skincare routine that won't break the bank. I would get um, CeraVe. I love all the CeraVe stuff I just bought more today. Like the hydrating wash is so good. The overnight moisture cream is so good. The day cream is so good. And you can get it at Walmart. You can get it at Target. You can get it at CVS. Um, and it's, it's not the cheapest one on the shelf, but it's also really good. It's actually what my dermatologist recommended. I've had two different dermatologists at different points in my life recommend it, and it's been really good. Um, what are some of your rules for life, like at home or work? we have rules as much as just like I always have a chip on the box yeah okay that is a rule Riley just said um, we always have a trick trip on the books I, not really a rule but in our family we like to always have something to look forward to like some kind of getaway to look forward to so we have that um, we try not to work on the weekend sometimes we do but we try not to work on you know, late Friday night, Saturday or Sunday and get like a good, some good time to just like be together and relax. I don't know. I don't, I feel like we're in a stage of life right now where there's not a lot of room. It's, we have the, the, the key to a successful day to day right now in our lives, I think is just flexibility, honestly, because you kind of never really know what you're going to get with two very small kids. I mean, they're still only two and four. And so you just never know who's going to wake up with a little cold or who's going to be really fussy or I don't know. You just never know with kids there. It's always, it's 
it's always something. <laughs> so, or even like on, on a good thing, like they're both in great moods and so you scrap everything you were gonna do for the day and go on some kind of outing or we'll go to the children's museum or something like that because they're in such good moods. It's like, let's capitalize on this and go do something fun. Um, you just never know. You never know. Okay, I think this is uh, most of the ones that I wanted to answer. Okay, I'll let this be the last question. What is your favorite part of your current stage in motherhood? Um, <clears throat> I'm enjoying with Nora so much that she is, she's hilarious and she just has like a fully, a full personality. Like she's four and a half and she's, she's really sweet and thoughtful and, um, I feel like I can actually have conversations with her and like we are developing like a, a relationship that goes back and forth and I really love that because she has preferences and she has opinions and I just am really enjoying that. And Colin is, he's just so stinking cute. This age is so cute. He mimics everything that Nora does. He like, he's just growing up so much. He's such a big boy. Um, I don't, I'm trying to nail down like a specific thing that I'm enjoying with him. I'm, I'm really enjoying this age with him a lot. I think I'm enjoying right now that he's still in this place where he's still babyish at times and wants to be like snuggled and held and rocked and things like that. Um, and then other times like when we get together with our friends or whatever and you just see him like tear off into the playground and climb up the slides and be like jumping all around and everything and it's like oh my gosh he's a little boy but he's still a baby. I kind of love that he walks that line right now because soon enough like the baby days will be over. So that's probably my favorite thing about him right now is that he's still my baby, but also he's growing up so fast. What are your favorite things right now? Um, Colin, like, is super attached to me right now. He really is. He won't, he won't leave me alone. He wants me to hold him all day long. So I do when I get the chance. Hold him all. Like today, I just held him and we watched movies all day. Yeah. He was so happy. Yeah. And he thought I was leaving in the morning and he was so sad. And then um, we just went out all day. So I love that about him. And Nora, um, yeah, Nora's just really funny, and I love, um, she's artsy. She is. So I like drawing with her and doing artsy stuff with her and seeing what she comes up with. Yeah, her drawings are so amazing. I know, I could, my mom showed me something, and she said, um, Nora drew this, and she showed it to me. And I was like, I think you mean, like, one of her... Older like, cousins. My, my niece did, and she said, no, Nora did. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, Nora is really artistic. She, in, in multiple ways, like... Her drawings, I mean, my friends always say, and I don't mean to be like, Ugh, but like every kid has their thing. And like when we're all together and our kids are coloring, my friends are always like, oh my gosh, she just has a knack for it. And it's really cute. And then she also has a knack for music. When she hears a song, she can sing on key, which I cannot do, but she got that from Riley. Yeah. <laughs> pretty impressive. She's really good. She's really good. And she like sings like right or even if she's just singing the song back to herself and there's no music playing like later in the day or something, a song that she heard earlier, she's right on tune. It's like really, I just think she's good. I think she's going to be a good singer and a good little art girl. Yeah. Yeah. And Colin, he is really clingy right now, specifically clingy to Riley. Um, ever since Disney. Yeah. Ever since <laughs> Disney, he got really clingy to you. At Disney, I just had to hold him the entire day every day and that was really rough um, but it's also been really cute and then he just just really wants me all the time yeah we thought maybe like he was getting molars or something um, you know sometimes when that happens kids get really clingy and kind of like upset but I don't know he was just he just was like a little koala yeah today all day he fell yeah. asleep on me on the couch we watched Wally -E for like a hundred times <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he was asleep, but like he, I held him all day. He didn't move. I know. He just was so happy to just sit there and watch movies, which I love that too. Yeah, I, it is. It is nice. Although it's a freezing cold day right now. Um, so like on a freezing cold day in February, it's nice to watch movies. We have watched Wreck It Ralph and Wally. -E. Specifically, Wreck It Ralph. I mean, I've probably seen that movie in the past few months. Like. 75 plus times we watch it pretty much every single day the kids are obsessed with it i think for halloween this year riley's gonna be ralph colin's gonna be fix it felix nora's gonna be vanellope and then i need to be something in that realm i don't know what i could be taffeta 
Candlehead? No, because they're like the mean girls. There's no other nice girls, though. Oh, you could be the um, the girl that um, Felix falls in love with. <laughs> Callahan. I don't want to have to cut my hair. <laughs> I had to cut my hair. I've finally grown it long. Um, I guess I could wear a wig or something. No, I probably wouldn't do that because that's weird because then I would be like with Colin. I'm not, <laughs> that's weird. Um, maybe something just candy related. Like I'll dress up as a piece of candy or something. Yeah, I'm sure you'll think of something. I'm sure I'll think of something. <laughs> but I keep having this vision of like Riley is Wreck It Ralph and Colin is Fis Fix It Felix and that is so stinking cute to me. Riley, uh, Colin would be the cutest Fix It Felix ever. I really have to, I'm gonna have to bulk up a lot. You are. You gotta keep like doing your protein going to the gym. <laughs> Riley's been, he's been, you've been going a lot. Yeah. I'm getting like a side stitch from sitting like this. I have like one hand on the um, camera. I think that's all the questions for, we have time for. Um, this is about 30 minute video. Can I so. ask you a question? Sure. If you could get, I asked you this before. If you could get a refund on anything you've ever purchased in your life, what would you get a refund on? What would you ask for a refund? A purchase. Those airline tickets. Oh, to France. To France that we bought and then had to cancel our trip and they didn't refund us a cent. Because I got nothing out of that. Even if I bought something and it didn't live up to its expectations, maybe I even got something out of it. But those, I literally got nothing. So that would be my, what about you? Um, one time I, I bought um, a hotel in Austin to go to Austin City Limits. And I went to the wrong hotel. But I thought it was Expedia's fault because I booked on Expedia for some reason, I don't know why. And um, I was like, well, I paid already. They're like, well, you're not in here. So I had to pay. And then, um, I don't know what I was thinking, but I paid for a hotel. Two times. I paid for two hotels basically, yeah. That Probably was. premium because it was during ACL. I mean, it was a very janky hotel. Oh. But I want that money back. <laughs> See? The Paris trip that I'm talking about was back before we had kids. And I, we were supposed to go when I was pretty early in my first trimester with Nora. And we had struggled to get pregnant with Nora. So we just decided, well, like, let's just go on this trip. And um, once I got pregnant, I was so ill i mean i was so nauseous and so sick the thought of flying internationally it was like absolutely not there was no way and we thought we could maybe move the trip or something like that and we could not and there wasn't even like a credit it was just a full out cancellation so rough. yeah a little bit rough but we got nora mm -hmm. worth it totally worth it um i probably could have tried to suck it if it had been our second child well then i don't know what we would have done with our first child I probably could have like pulled it together to go, but it would have been really hard. Cause I, that first trimester, well for me, I have morning sickness until like 20 ish weeks, both times, 20, 22 weeks where I am like extremely sick um, all day and I just feel awful. So the thought of like flying across the world and then trying to like make the most of our time there didn't sound super fun. But it also wasn't super fun to not get a refund on those tickets. Yeah. I'm sure I just got booked like the cheapest rate that was non-refundable. I would probably do that differently these days, but you know, you'll live and you'll learn. Yeah, trip insurance. Yeah. But we didn't. We didn't know. We were thinking there is, we were like, well, I mean, let's just go. All right, anyway. Oh, I am getting like a side stitch. Thank you so much for watching this video, our little car Q&A. And uh, I hope you guys have had a really great week or you know whenever it is that you're watching this thank you for being here make sure to like this video subscribe for more Disneyland vlogs will be out in the next like three ish months and what are you excited to do at Disneyland the most see it <laughs> walk down Main Street Haunted Mansion's gonna be closed I know Haunted Mansion's gonna be closed while we're there and that's so sad and I've only been on the Disneyland Haunted Mansion when it was the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay. So, so you never, never got to see the original. Normal thing. Dang it. Yeah. If we shifted our date a little bit, would it change it? Or no. is it going to be closed no for one, a while? No one knows. <sighs> but Tiana's um, adventure will be open early at Disney World. So if we go this fall, it'll be open this summer. Yeah, I would like, so we might be going to Disney World this fall. I'm thinking maybe in October because I have tickets to the Taylor Swift concert in Miami in late October and I'm thinking maybe 
it's the same state. So I'm like, maybe we could go to Disney World and then drive down and I could go to the Taylor Swift concert or Riley could just fly home with the kids and I could drive and meet my cousin. Do you want to fly Sounds alone? Like with a lot of fun for you. <laughs> Do you want to fly with the kids alone? No. He sure doesn't. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Hey, no edits, right? No, there's going to be some edits. <laughs> there's going to be some edits. <laughs>